Hey, Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome to today's video. Yes, I'm wearing sunglasses in the afternoon, not at night. There is a reason they're not a fashion statement. So, if you don't have a strong stomach, because there's a bit of a mess under there, <laughs> you might want to look away and just listen to the audio. But here goes. Earlier this week, I had a fall. So, I went back to work Monday and there's always catching up to do. And Wednesday, I had to go and see my treasurer at her office in the corporate tower, which is in the city. I noticed when I parked outside the corporate tower, the council have done a lot of work and they've now put two steps up to the pavement. The reason for that is the street this corporate tower is in floods very easily during the wet season and they have tried to rectify the flooding problem. I step up, I go in, everything is fine. I come out and I go to step down to get into my car and bang, I fall. I fell very hard forward. I fell forward like someone had pushed me and very hard. I cracked my head, I hurt my eyes, my knees were a mess and very sore. To have insult to injury, my car keys fell through the grill for the stormwater drain into the drain. And my phone was locked in the car. <laughs> so I'm sort of sitting there on the curb. Everyone is trying to help me. I was lucky. A lot of people came to help me, possibly because something in the city had happened earlier that day that had shocked everyone. Two construction guys came along and they crowbarred the grill of the drain open. The young guy, who's probably not even 20, climbed down in there thigh deep in the most disgusting water and felt around with his feet and got my car keys out. I couldn't remember things number to call him. I unlocked my car. I offered to buy, give him some money to have a drink after work. He wouldn't take it. These guys were awesome. Um, and I called the thing. In the meantime, someone's gone down to the corner medical center and got the nurse from in there and they've come up and they've gone, You've got two choices. We call you an ambulance or you come with us and we check you out. So it was only like 10 metres away. So I rang, told thing I was going to the medical centre because my face didn't feel right. And yes, the doctor checked me out. Um, this is good because it happened Wednesday. And when I woke up Thursday, both my eyes were blue, black and blue and swollen. I could barely see out of them. The doctor said I was very lucky I didn't crack my skull open. Um, he did keep asking me the same questions and I was getting really annoyed, but he was checking for concussion. He decided I had mild concussion. So there was a lot of car shuffling and taking me home and letting my committee know who were quite shocked that I'd hurt myself and, and, and very good to me. Um, I had to go back to the corporate tower Friday. Well, I didn't. I could have couriered the documents, but then came uh, came to pick me up to take me home, and he said he would go in because my treasurer really needed some documents for a meeting that afternoon, and I'd only gone in to get these documents. So when we went back to the corporate tower, he was looking at the step because I said I felt like I had been pushed from behind, and he goes, "Oh no." I take a six and a half shoe, which is very small. And the, the second step as you step down is too small for my foot. And he said, and what's worse is between the top step and the bottom step, they put this half ridge capping. So he said, as you've stepped, your heel has stepped on that. And that's why you went forward with so much momentum, fell and cracked your head. I know the doctor said to me, you are really lucky you didn't break both your wrists. They're very badly sprained. Um, and that's probably because I have good bone density. Every three years I have a bone density test. My doctor tells me I have great bone density for someone my age. Generally, it's not that good. So I highly recommend you keep up to date on your bone density test. And if it's low, eat more calcium. Anyway, this is... Sunday now, my eyes are looking that lovely pink, yellow, dirty colour and it's not very attractive. So if you can't watch it, look away and just listen to the audio. 
I'm really annoyed because the falls stopped me crafting. My wrists were too sore. But I did do one thing before I fell I want to share with you. I made a lovey for my little sit-down unicorn. She has pink feet. That's why I did pink. And she has little glittery stars on her face and body. So this is a Z from RJ3's crochet tutorial, which you do it on a headband. You can see my finger there. I used an extra large headband because she's quite big in the head and the neck. And I made it six point so it would sit on her better. I use Spotlight's Tiz yarn. It has the blingy thread. It's one of my favorites. It's an eight ply or DK weight. And I really like it. And I think it turned out really well. And I did that before I fell. It has my signature Pico edging. I call it my signature edging because I do that on the edge. Um, Z's is left plain. I have done them plain. But that was one thing I did before I fell. I started to feel better a little bit late yesterday. And this morning I decided I would make this lovey for my little elephant. Yes, this is the yarn I bought when I was away on holidays and put the signature Pico edging for my elephant. He's got a little blue on his feet. So I made that this morning. I used that um, Spotlight Baby, um, no, Lincraft Baby Soft 8 ply yarn that I bought in the print colours of blue. The 230 metres in a ball and that's what's left. So it does take quite a bit of yarn. For a lovey, it does say use a four millimeter crochet hook, but I used a 3.75. I like to make mine a little tighter for little hands. But there you have it. I have two more toys left. I have a pinky purple teddy bear and a Christmas teddy bear. No, a pinky purple owl and a Christmas teddy bear that I will make loveys for. I actually sold a little lovey on to someone this week very cheap I sold the lovey that I made with the um, Elmo head someone really wanted that so yes loveys they are a great scrap yarn project so which brings me to scrap September my mini make along if you're thinking I don't know what to make well make a lovey because you could use different colored yarns you only need a um, about 80 grams, maybe less, depending on the weight of yarn, 140 meters or 150 yards of yarn to enter scrap timber to make a scrap yarn project. And a lovey is perfect. Um, I was going to say, all you need to do for scrap timber, sorry, I am a little vague, is send me a photo of the scrap yarn before you make the project and a photo of the finished project and give me permission if you don't mind, if you do, that's fine to post it on the Facebook group page or Instagram so I can share the great projects with you. We've had quite a few come in, a few more. I wouldn't say a lot, but a few more. And yes, it is looking good. We have two prizes at the moment and I've had the offer of a surprise a third prize by a subscriber. Um, depending on the number of entries as to whether we use the third prize, I haven't. Um, got back to her via email so a couple of people have emailed me and I haven't replied um, one because I couldn't see to type um, Reeves would read the emails to me he was going to type my replies but I said no it's just easier I can't really think straight I'll do it when I'm feeling better one of those people is kitty mum she sent me an email I'll get back to you as soon as I can Penny and um, Karen right she um, sent me some photos for uh, the birthstone make along and a new cow she thought I might be interested in and I checked that out this morning. Um, it is the mixed tape medley cow knit craft mixed tape medley cow. She sent me a photo of a project they're only up to about week two. It's not too late to join. I um, it's DK yarn. It's about 12 colours. There is a pack you can buy. Their pack you can buy of their yarn. But um, it's 137 metres per 50 gram ball. I think it's a blanket. 125 centimetres by 195 centimetres. But um, 
And it's hosted by Zine and Rogers. Now, I think it's Rosalie. I'm vague. Oh, Zina Rogers is actually making a scarf. So I think the project's up to you and the yarn is really up to you. And that's what I was checking out this morning. I um, went through my stash. I can't decide whether I'll use the Marvel Spotlight 8 ply because I do have 12 colours of that. Or I might use the Cocoon yarn, which I've put here. I don't have 12 colours, but I have more than enough meterage. I worked out the total number of meterage this project and I have plenty there whether I just do it in those colors or whether I add a couple of colors I don't know I will decide and that's if I go ahead and make it but I am quite keen because I really liked what I saw in Karen's photos I'll put a link to Zine and Rogers video about this cow um, if you're interested and you're looking like me for something new to do um, I have um, been thinking and planning a couple of Halloween projects. I'm, I'm not big on Halloween, but I do like to make a couple um, because if I have a stall at the October market, people always come up looking for a Halloween tea cosy or something Halloween-y. So, yeah, I've, that's been in my mind. I've just been making notes in very big, large writing so I can see it, um, and we'll see how I go. I haven't been driving, so tomorrow will be the first time I think I'll be all clear to drive. Uh, I'm coming back pretty good now um, because we've had a funny Sunday. So being Sunday for my update, I get up this morning and Saxon's out in the yard playing uh, as he normally does after breakfast. He's running around and having fun. It's at this time he's barking his head off at my compost bin. And I said to think, oh, I bet there's a snake. So he said, no, there's a blackbird underneath it going nuts. And I said, no, it wouldn't be the bird making him do that. I, they're not crows. I don't know what these birds are. I should take a photo and put it into my bird um, count app because it'll tell me what it is. But thing goes out there and he goes, well, there is a two and a half meter grass, a two and a half foot, sorry, it wasn't very big, two and a half foot grass snake under the compost bin. And the bird wants it for breakfast and the snake's not having a bar of it. And Saxon was trying to referee. He said, I just picked Saxon up and brought him in. The bird flew off and he said, and the snake went. And I, it's not in my compost bin because I did put scraps in it a little while ago and turned it all over with a handle, cranked it over, and it's not in there. So it's gone off to find a tree. So that was this morning's adventure. So Thing goes to the beach with Saxon, and Reeves and I, because I'm not feeling great, and Reeves is not feeling great with the sore neck, he um, and I was sitting on the couch. I was checking out the cow. He was reading and chatting to me, you know, how you do. When next door... <laughs> We heard the lady next door where we only ever hear the kid noises let out the most unholy scream and screaming. So we go running out because it's the fence side of our house and she's going, snake, snake, there's a big snake. And we heard the little boy say, get a hammer, get a hammer. And Reeves is saying, just go inside, shut the door, call the snake hangler. She said, it's black with red. And he goes, then definitely go inside, shut the door, keep the kids inside, we'll get, we'll call the snake handler. Because a black snake with red on it is possibly a red belly black snake. It can make you very ill. It can kill a child with its venom. And no, you don't hit it with a hammer or you just leave it alone. You let the snake handler deal with it or you let it slither off somewhere else. Where she was is where her washing line is and it's nice and sunny and it's that time of year when it's sunny and warm like this so snakes come out to sun themselves. So that was that. We no sooner got over that and Thing comes home with Saxon and he's not looking too happy. A bull terrier attacks Saxon down at the beach. No, he's not hurt, which is really lucky. Apparently the bull terrier was part of a party group of people in the barbecue area and he bolted and went straight for Saxon, grabbed him around the back of the neck and was trying to throw him around. Thing had him on the lead. The bull terrier wasn't on the lead and he was trying to fight him off. Um, the lady who owned the bull terrier, all these women came running up screaming, trying to get the dog off Saxon. 
thing thought Saxon would definitely have a damaged ear or lose an ear. But when they finally got the dog off, the dog had bitten and gotten the collar and the lead all wrapped in his mouth, which protected Saxon. So he wasn't hurt other than shaken up. The lady who wrestled her dog off was bleeding. She was really apologetic, things said. She gave her, him her number and address for vet bills um, because... One of her male friends in the party during all of this walked up and slapped Thing up the side of the face and told him to leave the dog alone. His mates had to pull him off and were really apologetic about him. They said he's not quite all there, but we things said they'd been drinking. You know, it's like Sunday lunch drinking. And... Um, he said, I said, you sh he said, there were witnesses who gave me their phone numbers, their names. He said, Morris, who he sees quite a bit walking his dog, he said, like, wrote down the car, Rego. And I said, you should report it, but he won't. He said, Saxon's not hurt. I'm not hurt, just shaken up. And he said, the woman was just outraged that someone had let her dog off the lead because it was tied up, he, she said. But that's it. We've had an adventurous day. <laughs> so I'm cooking a roast and we're going to watch the Formula One Grand Prix tonight in Russia because it's on at 10 o'clock, which is a respectable hour for us. And hopefully we'll enjoy that. But yes, it's been a fun week. So that's two snakes today. And I always believe things come in three. So I've been checking everywhere inside the dryer, inside the washing machine, inside the toilets, wherever I go. My Reeve said, here comes the snake spotter. She's looking because they do get inside. Anyway, guys, take care. Stay safe. Watch where you walk. Don't trip over. I didn't trip. I fell. And make sure you have some fun because life's an adventure and you should have a scrap yarn adventure in September. Bye for now.